Hello everyone and welcome back. When most people sign up for an online dating account, all they are looking for is someone to fall in love with. But instead of that, sometimes they are experiencing horrifying encounters. So, grab your flashlight and let's step into the darkness together. Number 1 So, this happened today. Against my better judgment, at the beginning of the month, I got a Tinder. I matched with a few guys. One of them is James. We ended up texting each other and he seemed pretty chill and pretty into me. He's a decent looking guy and we seemed to click. He had apparently been in a relatively abusive relationship with a woman and he was looking to start over. According to him, she had hit him with a frying pan and pepper sprayed him once. He kept going on about how crazy she was. All right, it happens. We went out to the movies this past Friday and I had a great time. We ended up talking for a few hours and we hit it off pretty well. I asked about the ex because I was a bit curious as to why he'd stay with someone like that. He did not say anything positive about her. Just that she was crazy, had mental illness and did not take care of meds, that kind of stuff. She had tried to baby trap him, but she had a miscarriage. He expressed relief that she didn't end up with a kid. He said he had felt obligated to her. Again, I get that. In all I had a good time. This morning rolls around and he tells me that he had hooked up with his ex last night and that he was going to try and work things out with her. Mildly insulting that I lost out to an abusive chick but whatever. I tell him it's cool. He then, a few hours later, texted me to say that she was crazy and he thought she was changing but she wasn't. Blah, blah. He kept asking if he could see me. He was being very pushy about it, waiting to see me today. He begged for five minutes of my time so he could explain to me. I politely told him that I didn't want to be involved with someone who was so clearly hung up on his ex. This is where it got nuts. He admitted he still was, but that he wanted to see me today so I could meet her and she could determine if I was better for him than she was and that she wanted him to be happy because he and I had a connection. I flipped after that, told him that the fact he needed his ex to determine who was right for him was absolutely nuts and that is not what love is and that I wanted no part of it. His ex started texting me after that and it was non-stop insults and incoherent shit that made no sense. She also dropped the bomb that she was his wife. I told her to fuck off, basically, and blocked the number. I went on Tinder to message him, where I called him a piece of shit, and if he was intelligent, he should leave her and never message me again. He started to harass me, saying that it was miserable because they have a beautiful love together and all this crazy shit. He then went on to say, My wife knows where you work. I hope she doesn't do anything rash. And I told him, if that was a threat, I would gladly go to the police. He then said that she has been to jail before. She is not afraid and that she loves him so much she would fuck anyone up and risk jail for him that she would kill my friends if they tried to protect me, that she is armed and dangerous. I told him goodbye, reported him and deleted my Tinder account. I did go to the police tonight, but since it wasn't a direct threat, they can't do much. The cop thinks that James was more or less full of shit and just trying to scare me, since some people love getting off on that shit. He said I did the right thing by blocking him and reporting him. 
Instead, I should just keep my eyes open and alert the people at my job. Scary thing is, James seemed perfectly normal, but he lied about being married, how he felt toward his wife, and he flipped like a switch. His excuse for not being upfront about his marriage was that they were going to get a divorce. From all this hatred and aggressive attitude, I assume he is insane. I have to honestly wonder what would have happened if I had gone to talk for five minutes. I'm kinda concerned, since they do know where I work, but if either of them try anything, then the cops can actually nail them. What a weekend. Number 2 For clarity, I am straight, 21-year-old female. So, in November of 2016, I went through a pretty bad breakup. In October of 2017, I finally felt comfortable enough to try to get back into the dating world. So like a moron, I got on Tinder and it wasn't my first rodeo with Tinder. But this was the strangest thing that happened to me. So towards the end of October, I met a guy named Dave on Tinder. And from the looks of it, he was an okay guy. He was funny and a gentleman. We didn't ask for anything inappropriate. It seemed fine. We talked for about two weeks and set up a time to go on a date. We decided to meet in the city, where he had recently moved to, which was about 35 minutes away from my house. I go to the bar to wait for him, and he was 15 minutes late. He walked in and looked relatively similar to his pictures, which I was happy about. And then he opened his mouth to talk, and he had a very strange voice. Like he was always on the verge of crying. Very weird. He had some tattoos on his arm, including the all-seeing eye Illuminati symbol. Trying to break the tension, I jokingly said, Illuminati confirmed, tell me all your secrets. And he goes, what the hell are you talking about? Don't say that kind of stuff in public. I just kind of laughed it off, and he was being really weird. He then says, You know that people who pry are people who die. I just looked at him, and I genuinely did not know how to respond. Fast forward about 20 minutes, and a couple of my friends came to the bar at my urging. I moved to sit on the same side as him, so that my friends could sit on the same side of the booth. The minute I sit down, he put his hand on my knee, and squeezes, and not like, oh, I'm interested, but a hard fucking squeeze. I looked at him to stop, and he leans over me and whispers, you have lovely kneecaps. Like, boy, what? By the time my friends left, which was about an hour into the date, he had seven beers. It was the Tuesday. As I go to close my tub, he stands behind me and he had a boner. I very quickly signed my receipt and stepped away. As I am getting ready to say goodbye, it starts raining, and he then informs me that he walked to the bar from his house and asks for a ride home. I agreed, and on the very short drive to his house, he informs me that it is not actually his house and thought he is living in his sister's basement. When I finally park in front of his house, he leans over to kiss me, and I try to give him the cheek, and he physically turns my head and puts his entire tongue in my mouth. And I pulled away, and this guy did it again. I finally pulled away and said, Get the fuck out of my car, and he responds with, I am in love with you. I knew from the moment I saw your pictures, you have to come inside and meet my sister and her husband. I told him that if he didn't get out of my car, I was calling the police. And he started tearing up and got out of my car. 
Number three. So hey guys, I've been lurking this up for like two years, and thanks to the wonders of online dating, I finally have quite the story to share with you. I use Tinder pretty frequently, and it's usually cool. Just meeting people, chilling, smoking with most of them. So I match with this dude named Charlie, and he seems cool. He's really cute, and he plays music, which is really appealing to me, as I also sing and play piano. We walk for a little while, and I agree to meet him at his house. Mistake number one. Why did I think it was a good idea to meet a stranger in their home? I don't drive. So I take an Uber over, and it's a decent way away, so it's kind of pricey. When he buzzes me into the apartment complex, I got this really creepy vibe, but I shook it off as nerves. I go up to the third floor, and he's standing at the door. Things are cool. We're just chilling. We smoked a couple of bowls, and we're watching a movie. So he makes a move on me. And I go with it. We end up on the bed, and we obviously engaging in adult activities. When out of nowhere, he wraps his hand around my neck, hard. Now that's all fine and good with me. I mean, I can dig that in the right setting, but alone, in a stranger's house, when he didn't even check to me if it was okay, is not one of those things. So I literally can't breathe, and I'm fairly certain I'm turning blue at this point. And he is just relentless. Not only is he asphyxiating me, he's also yelling in my face. Are you scared? With this wild look in his eyes, and I'm like, "Fuck yes, I'm scared. You're trying to kill me right now." I started to struggle, and he was gripping even harder. I'm not even kidding you guys. I seriously thought I was going to die. By some miracle, I wriggle out of his grasp and start screaming. He's yelling at me to calm down, and I'm frantically trying to put on my clothes. He grabs my wrist, and I am trying to leave, and I use all of my strength to pull away and slam the door. As it was closing, the charming fella. Beat me a duel with the worst fucking cunt. I get home, and I look in the mirror, and I have hella bruises on my neck. I try to cover it up with makeup to no avail. I straight up look like I was almost strangled to death. Then he texts me, saying, "I think you need more than one dick." And I'm like, "Oh really? You want to bring a friend and kill me together?" How lovely. Anyways, I blocked him and reported him on Tinder. I wish I could have done more, because I seriously think he would have killed me. I've been debating going to the police, but the bruises are gone, and it's a he said she said thing. But I'm really starting to wonder if I should, because the next girl might not be so lucky. Zero out of ten would not attempted murder again. Number four. As a bit of backstory, I was working at a small chain motel in the Midwest as a night auditor, so my hours were normally eleven p.m. to eight a.m. With those kinds of hours and being a woman. I'm bound to have some weird stories. The scariest time I've ever had working there happened within my first month. So it was a little before my shift started, and because I was single and twenty-two, I was on Tinder before work. I matched with this guy who seems cool, a little golf alternative, and into Ouija boards, which is my type. So I was hype at the time. We talk for a bit, and I tell him I have to go to work. We say goodbye. Now, that night 
was my first night of training, so I was running the motel by myself for nine hours. I was already a little nervous, but then this vaguely familiar guy comes up to the front desk and asks for me by name. In my head, I've got red flags blaring at me because this dude is weird, not by looks, but just by vibe. I tell him that I'm me and he explains that he was the guy from Tinder and he saw that I was less a mile away, so he went to see if I was possibly working at his hotel. That's right, this guy was staying where I worked, red flag number two. I stay behind the comfort of my desk for two hours because this guy won't stop talking to me. Mostly about how his ex left him and how he beat people up and how he wanted to bang me. Needless to say, I was uncomfortable. And this hasn't happened to me before in a work environment, so I did not know what to do. He finally decided to go to bed at 2 or 3 am and I take a much needed smoke break. I go outside and right after I spark up, guess who shows up? Creepy dude. I snooped a bit on his account and he was a painter and was doing work locally, so he wasn't from here. He tells me about where he's from and keeps getting closer and closer to me. He asks if he can smoke weed, which I said, yes. To do so, get away from me. I showed him where the cameras weren't and he pulled me in, smelled my neck and started grabbing my ass. I swiftly hit him and told him he better not fucking touch me. I threw my cigarette on the ground and he grabbed my phone to call my boss before going inside. Creepy dude rips the phone from my hand and proceeds to text himself. Now he had my number. First thing he sends me creepy porn pictures with captions like I can't wait to do this to you. You know what room I'm in. Now I'm already freaking out and I don't know why he didn't call the cops and my boss wasn't answering. So there's me in the back office having the panic attack of my life when I get one more video. Why I clicked on it I'll never know. I refuse to say what I saw in detail but it was a snuff porn film, very violent, very sexual. I then locked myself in the back room, cried and waited a few hours before proceeding to make hotel breakfast. The text went on for a few days until I had enough and got the balls to tell my boss. He immediately kicked out creepy dude and banned him from our hotel. His company is not even allowed to book with that hotel anymore. In hindsight, I should have called the police. But I was too scared. Number 5 I've previously posted this in an Ask Reddit for creepiest girl you've ever met. A lot of commenters told me to post it here. So here it goes. This happened about six months ago. I was drunkenly sweeping through Tinder and matched with a relatively cute girl who had mutual friends, both from our college and from our high school, but I had never met or seen her before. I proceed to casually message her with some of my usual flattering pickup lines, not thinking too much about it. We sent maybe ten or so messages before I passed out in bed. The next day, I woke up and realized that my beer goggles were definitely on the night before. Because the Tinder girl was a beast. She participated in a chicken wing eating contest every weekend. So, of course I did not message her and went on with my day as usual. I got home at around 7 p.m. and decided to take a quick 20 minute nap. The quick nap soon turned into 5 hours of sleep. It was now 2 a.m. and my phone was dimly lit, showing I had 5 unread text messages 
from a number I did not recognize. The text messages went as followed, 11.30 p.m. Hey, what are you up to tonight? 11.50 p.m. Hey, you there? 12.17 p.m. Are you ignoring me? 12.35 p.m. Really? After the night we had last night? 12.56 p.m. I bet if I came to your apartment, you had to talk to me. So, at this point, I am on the verge of producing a lot of shit from my bank hole, both as a defensive technique, as well as shitting myself at the thought that if this girl was capable of getting my number, there is no reason she would not be able to find out my address as well. I jump out of bed, use my phone light and scan the room, checking every corner and underneath my bed for signs of life. Nothing. Still panicking and grabbed the closest object to me to use as a weapon. A lavender scented spray bottle, aka a desperate man's pepper spray. So now, with this spray bottle in my hand, I quietly open my bedroom door and point the nozzle left to make sure the coast was clear. As I turn right to do the same, my heart drops as I see a horrible sight. The front door is unlocked. At this point, my shit is now resting against my anus in preparation for explosive diarrhea. But still, I cannot tell if Tinder Girl is bluffing, so the house search continues. I walk down the dimly lit hallway, pointing the spray bottle around each corner. I pass the closet, the kitchen, and now I'm approaching the living room, when I see a light reflecting off the walls. It was coming from the TV. Did I leave the TV on when I went to take my nap? If so, why was it on mute? I'm freaking out now and not thinking logically. My only thought is that I need to confirm that there is another human in this house before I can call the police. I am now standing at the corner of the hallway, next to the living room. I can see the TV is on, but cannot see the couch where a person would be sitting. Too scared to turn the corner, I take out my phone and call the person who sent me five text messages. I turn down the volume, almost all the way as I stand there and wait for the call to connect. My phone eventually connects and make the first ring, and then I hear it. I hear the sound that still haunts me to this day, the original iPhone ringtone, and it's coming from the living room. I stand there in shock, not knowing what to do next. Tinder girl found out my phone number, my address, and is now sitting in my living room. The phone rings again before Tinder Girl ends the call. I then hear movement on the leather couch, and I hear her take a step towards the hallway. My brain goes into overdrive. This bitch is walking to my room. Inside my head, I see a coin flip end over end, with the word fight on one side and flight on the other. She takes another step, the coin is still flipping, another step, the coin hits the ground and is spinning, another step, she's right around the corner now, the coin lands and I read the words written on top, fight, another step, I can see her shoe, I make my move and launch in her direction, the spray bottle still in my hand, she takes another step and makes eye contact with me for a split second. She has just enough time to let out a high pitched scream as my shoulder connects with torso. I tackle her to the ground and wrestle with her on the floor, spraying the lavender spray into her eyes like a madman. Feels like it takes a lifetime, but in reality, I had her pinned within a few seconds. I point the spray bottle at her face. She is crying now, desperately trying to rub her eyes. I don't budge 
and start screaming questions at her. I don't remember everything I asked, but I do remember asking over and over why she was in my apartment. How did she get my address or phone number? She sobbingly tells me she just wanted to meet me and hang out, but so I was sleeping, so she was waiting until I woke up to be nice. In complete shock and awe of her response, I finally grab my phone and call the police. As I wait for the police to show, Tinder girl is hysterically crying, telling me how she just wanted to be boyfriend and girlfriend and have a perfect family and all kinds of bad shit, crazy shit. Eventually, the police come and separate us. They don't cuff her immediately, but after I explained what happened and showed my proof, they arrested her and took her lavender-smelling ass into a cop car. So yeah, that was my creepy girl story. I believe she got my phone number by messaging a mutual friend on Facebook. But I am still unsure how she was able to find my address. All in all, I was probably never in real danger, but the thought that she had gone as far as to walk inside my house and wait for me enough to spook me into never using Tinder again. Number 6 Around March of 2014, I started talking to this girl on Tinder. She seemed cool and fun, and after about a week of talking, she suggested we'd meet up in person. She invited me to this coffee shop and I accepted. However, she started messaging me, saying she had to tell me something. Her pictures on Tinder weren't actually of her, and yes, she was a guy. He claimed he really liked talking to me though, and begged me to still meet up with him. Naturally, I declined. I blocked his profile and continued on with life. About a week later, I started talking to another girl. Once again, she seemed cool and fun and we hit it off. She asked me if I spoke to people on Tinder frequently and rather stupidly I told her about my previous encounter with a man lady. Weeks later, I would realize that this new girl was the same girl as the week before. She asked me if I wanted to meet up and I said sure as long as it was in a public place. We decided on a cafe, and the next day, I sat at the table, waiting. Five, ten, fifteen minutes had passed, and she was nowhere to be found. I then peered out the window, and saw, from across the street, a man staring at me. I looked away, waited for a few seconds, and looked back. He was still standing there staring. At that point, I left the cafe, got on my bike, I always bike everywhere, and booked it home. I was definitely a little freaked out, but tried to pull myself together, and reasoned that no one could have followed me. I then deleted my Tinder profile, and things were normal for a few weeks. About three weeks later, I started getting phone calls, the numbers all showed up as unknown. I picked up the first few times to some guy breathing heavily into the phone. I was already a little freaked out. After about a day, I stopped picking up any calls unless it displayed the caller's name. I then started receiving texts. At first, they were pretty harmless. Calls for attention and begging me to meet in person. It then changed to very sexual texts, until eventually the messages became threatening and whoever was messaging me started throwing out my family and friends' names, saying he or she would get them involved unless I answered. Because they were texting me, I could see a displayed number. But when I called phone providers, they told me the number could not be traced and that it was probably a truck phone. Great. I waited about two weeks, not responding to the texts, 
thinking I should not feed the troll. But eventually, it became too much. I started getting upwards of 50 texts and phone calls a day. I would wake up to 10 or 20 texts every morning. I then decided to change my number altogether. The texting calls stopped for a while, but sure enough, it started happening again. I called my phone provider, asking if they were gave out numbers at a user's request, and they said their policy stated that they would not unless valid identification was provided. Then one day, I tried logging into my Facebook, but was denied. Within a day, friends started contacting me, asking what the hell I was doing, saying that they were getting terrible messages from my account. In particular, one of my girlfriends was receiving messages about her mom, who died years ago. I apologized profusely and told people what was going on. I contacted Facebook and explained the situation and they helped me access my account again, at which point I deactivated for a while. Enough was enough. I decided to contact the FBI, explaining what had been going on, for over a month now. They documented everything, but told me, since I or any of my relatives or friends were in no immediate danger, they probably would not be able to do anything. At that point, I felt stuck. I thought about hiring a private investigator or a hacker. I decided against it, however, and just hoped it would fade out if I never answered. I left my Facebook deactivated and ignored any texts or phone calls. I never had any trouble at home, but some of my closest friends received the occasional texts as well which weirded us all out. I hated that they got dragged into this. One day, I came home and things felt very eerie. Door unlocked, windows open, and no one home. A strong breeze running through the apartment, I did a check of the place and found nothing else. Weird. So I locked everything up and just waited for my roommates to get home. It's been almost seven months now. The cold texts have more or less stopped. I'll get an occasional text, but at most one every two weeks. At the peak of it, I was receiving almost a hundred texts a day. It definitely affected my social personal life. I began to worry about all of people around me and my surroundings. I just felt like I could not really focus on anything until this stopped. Work was difficult though. I tried to maintain my composure as best I could. Everything was just weird. Life was weird. I have since stopped using all forms of dating apps, websites. Things are getting back to normal and at this point, I just want to put it all behind me. I'm moving at the end of this year, so it will be nice to have a fresh start in a new place. I am not going to sit here and say all dating apps are dangerous and no one should use them, but definitely cover your bases. Ask more questions before meeting someone. FaceTime them first. Skype anything. I was naive about it. And I regret it. Be safe, stick close to your friends and try meeting people in more traditional ways. Number 7 This happened a few months ago and it still leaves me wonder. It all started with me being for a long time with no relationship or any other contact with the opposite sex, I guess. Just to clear things out, I am a 28 years old male. I live alone in my own apartment and other than a few friends and my work, not much is going on in my life currently. As I said, I have not been out of relationship or anything close to that for almost a year now. So one of my friends informed me about Tinder. That fucker. I downloaded the app, but in the first days, I did not know what to do really. It was strange to me, so my friend 
came over to my house and explained a few things, just to keep things short. Eventually, I got the hang of it, and a few days later, there I was, sending messages to a complete stranger. To my surprise, she texted me back, and I was actually really happy, because she seemed like a decent person and someone I could date. At the beginning, our messages were short, like, Hi, how are you? Or, what music do you like? And all the stuff, but eventually, we had some long conversations that I really enjoyed. At some point, I thought that maybe I could give her my number or Skype so that we could talk even more. But it didn't seem like a good idea, so I played safe for a little more. Until one day, I got a message from her saying that she would really like to date with me and meet me in person. At first, I was hesitant about it, but it was something that I also wanted. From our chatting, she seemed mature enough and we had a lot of things in common. So long story short, that day came. We met in this nice little restaurant at the edge of the town. And we had a very good time. At first I was very anxious, not only because I haven't been on a date since forever, but also I didn't know if the person I was going to meet would be anything like the one I was chatting all this time. To my surprise, she was even better looking than the photos and very pleasant to talk. Also, it turns out that she is friends with a girl from my work. We finished our meal and we thought it would be nice to go for a walk and hang out a little more. Neither of us wanted to rush things, so a walk would be perfect for a start. So there we are, walking and talking, talking and walking, till a red sports car that was running with what it seemed to be the speed of light stops violently in front of us. I mean, the brakes were smoking. A big dude comes out of the car and starts charging at me. I am not proud of this, but I was frozen. I did not know what to do. It didn't make any sense. My date, who we will call Joanna, stepped in front of me just in time to stop him. I immediately understood that she knew him. She calmed him down a bit and gave me a look like saying, Go, run you fool. By that time, I pretty much knew what was going on. So I took the opportunity and like Frodo, I started walking away. The dude kept staring at me like an angry fucking animal. I went straight to my house and a few moments later, I got a message from her saying that she is sorry and explaining pretty much that he was her ex and he has not yet accepted their breakup. Of course I was angry. I remember screaming to my phone. Oh, you think, lady? Well, eventually, I calmed down. After all, it wasn't her fault. Although I couldn't believe that a girl like her was in a relationship with that dude. Days was passing by, and we kept texting each other, but not as much as we used to before this incident. She tried to convince me for a second date, but I wasn't so sure, so I postponed it in hope that things would clear out on their relationship. And I do not know. Maybe I don't get killed for walking next to her. Just maybe. More days went by, and I was so busy with work that I was texting even less than before to her. Of course, not in purpose. One day, I came back from work late at night. Even though it was so dark outside, I could clearly see that one of my house windows was broken. I immediately called the cops and I did not walk into my house in case the intruder was still inside. The police came, searched the place and found a big rock in my living room. Someone had thrown it and broke my window, but there was not a single thing missing. The officers made a report, but of course, said that there wasn't a lot of things that they could do. Fucking great! I slept to a buddy of mine that night, just in case, and I had the window fixed the next day. 
The big angry guy came first in mind, but I didn't have any evidence. I text Joanna just to let her know what happened and ask her opinion. Is this something her ex might have done? She just answered with a simple, maybe. Instead of focusing on my problem, she asked again for a date. That was very weird. I did not even answer back. The next day, I am at work. I am ready to finish my last papers to go home. And I receive a big great text from Joanna. I will not write down the details of it, but in general lines, she said I was a cunt and that no one ever will neglect her and stuff that didn't even make sense. I leave my work earlier, really puzzled, and as I am about to arrive home, I see from a distance Joanna throwing a big rock into the window I had just replaced. I stayed in my car with my mouth open completely thrilled. She was about to leave like nothing happened when she noticed my car. She glanced at me like she was about to kill me, but then she left. Fortunately, after calling the police again and filling a report, she hasn't bothered me since. A few weeks later, I was talking with a girl from my work and she told me that Joanna was back with her ex. Well, I wasn't surprised after what I saw. I could say that those two belong together in a way. I guess it doesn't matter how normal someone might look, you can never know the craziness that they hide beneath. So let my mistake teach you something. Hey there, and thank you so much for listening. Because so many of you are asking about my art and if I'm selling prints. Yes, I am selling prints and originals, paintings and drawings. You can always find the link in the description, and especially for the previous Japanese Legends video, I am running a super limited edition of 10 signed prints of the artwork you saw me draw in this video. So once they're gone, they're gone forever. Don't forget to comment and like, and I will see you all in my next video.